All right, I'm gonna do a piece for y'all. It's uh, it's called Dying to Be Beautiful. This sister sits in the surgeon's office, awaiting her consultation, reading an article about a lady who just died from complications after having several operations from a doctor who was already in litigation and being sued by some of his patients. See, Kanye West gave Donda the best of everything, from luxurious mansions to extravagant cars and fabulous diamond rings. But we all know don't none of this matters, because as we age, we get a little fatter. And that size 16 don't feel so flattering. We'd all like our stomachs to be more flattering. We figure a simple breast lift will do the trick, but which one of us is trying to die from a tummy tuck? See, we live in a society that praises the beautiful. So all day and all night, this sister prays to be beautiful. About to spend every single cent of her pay to be beautiful. Because they told her her nose was too wide. And so was her ass and her thighs. And that she could probably use a little more slant to her eyes. And to get some Botox in her brow. And some collagen in her lips. And since she was already on the table, to let the doctor liposuction those hips. So on her quest to be beautiful, this sister has thousands to invest to be beautiful. See, the food she eats, there's no question she ingests it, but sticks her finger down her throat before she ever has a chance to digest it and thinks that no one notices that she's borderline anorexic. She's 5'2", and that's size 2. She's desperately trying to fit because her role model is a Vogue model whose rib cage is showing and whose collarbones are protruding out. And so the acid from the vomit is causing this sister's teeth to rot in her mouth because someone told her that nothing tastes as good as thin feels. So she kneels and says grace to the toilet bowl after after each meal. See, that someone should have told her that beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. And that it is inevitable that things will sag as we get older. And no, I don't know the hour, but I hope my days are many. Because when I'm 50, I won't waste my time trying to look 20. I plan to caress every crease and wrap my heart around every wrinkle. I plan to love every laugh line until the day that I flatline. And if I ever have to choose between wearing a buck or five and having a slice of sweet potato pie, y'all, I'm going to be a fat chick for life. See, most of us don't need surgery. We need therapy to uncover this pain that's buried so deep. This hatred for self that's buried in each. Reject the standards of beauty that the industries teach. Laugh at the irrational goals they expect us to reach. Scoff at the commercials that tell us lose 20 pounds in a week. When will we learn that the beauty we seek lies within us? See, beauty happens the moment you put the paintbrush to the canvas or the moment you rock an open mic for the first time, or the moment you put the pen to the pad to create your first rhyme. See, beauty happens the moment you tell the brother who says he loves you that you ain't ready for sex. And when he threatens to replace you with another, you can boldly scream out next. Because in that beautiful moment, you realize your body belongs to you. And you are more than enough, and that fool just proved he was wrong for you. See, beauty is peace. Beauty is strength. Real beauty is not just something on the outside, y'all. Real beauty comes from within. Beauty is respect. Beauty is love. And beautiful is as beautiful does. So realize you're wasting your time and your dime if you're trying to buy beautiful and that Kanye's mother lost her life not knowing she was dying to be beautiful. Thank you. Today I looked in the mirror. Beyond purposes of vanity, I am consciously ready to embrace the pain in me. I'm tired of logic romancing me. I'm sick of the rational dancing with me. I shout profanities at the enemy until I realize that she is in me. And so I'm ready to tell the truth now. I'm ready to tell the truth about my sexual abuse, about my sexual misuse about my sexual illusion, about my sexual confusion. And I'm ready to tell the truth now about my irrational fear of dying, about my passionate tears of crying, about my need to stop lying, about the real reason I get high is because it's the only time I feel like I'm flying. <laughs> See, I'm ready to tell the truth now. I don't know what love looks like. I don't know how love feels. I don't know what love tastes like. Hell, I don't know what love is because I ain't never seen love. Let me 
Rebecca. See, I ain't never seen love. And I've never been introduced to trust until he asked for my life when I slept with him unprotected and he ejaculated in me and thought that somehow I'd be unaffected. When he called a couple of days later to say that maybe I should get tested because there's a chance I might be infected with something his fucking ex had. See, I'm ready to tell the truth now. See, the truth is most of the sex I have is for recreation because I have no real interest in procreation. Because the truth is, I don't think I'd make a good mother. And the truth is, half the time I don't feel like being bothered. And I don't mean no disrespect, but I don't want a baby daddy. Because to me, that's just real trite. Six minutes of fucking and now we're connected for life. And I don't even like him. And my son looks just like him. And so every day I'm reminded of just how trifling his ass is. Y'all mind if I tell the truth? See, the truth is, I don't know who I am. I only know that of what you made me. I don't even know that I am. I only know that of what you gave me I thought was a gift. But now that I've had this shift in perspective, I want to live. And I ain't taking no Prozac, y'all. I'm taking my fucking life back because these lies have manifested themselves into panic attacks. And my psychiatrist says that I am manically depressed. And why the hell wouldn't I be when I've been maniacally oppressed? And I don't need a priest to release myself from these confessions. I only need to release myself from these possessions. And so I am willing to quit my job to do my life's work. And I am willing to give up my car because I got a different kind of drive. And I am willing to divorce from my relationship to find real love. And I am willing to burn all these damn clothes so that y'all can finally see my soul. Y'all thinking I'm crazy, that I'm a little neurotic, uh-huh. Y'all gonna leave here saying that bitch on stage rocked it, but her ass was psychotic. <laughs> and that I was up here indulging in my own psychosis. And ain't none of y'all no doctor, but y'all gonna give me loony as a diagnosis. But whatever, whatever it is you throw at me, oh, I can straight hack it. Oh, I will put on your tight white straight jacket, and as a black chick, oh, I will make that shit fashionable. <laughs> With my boot cut jeans and my high heels, I'm telling y'all, y'all gonna make me lose my mind. Up in here, up in here. Cause for too long, I've camouflaged my existence. But now that I'm out, my entourage is non-existence. The collage of this experience has caused a barrage of self-sabotage. But I am finally ready to say bon voyage to this life. No more spiritual warfare, no more relationship welfare with its limited benefits and having to be poor and do without just to receive the shit. So, whether or not you eat this truth I feed you, fuck it, I don't need you. And I don't need your help, because I'm finally ready to lose my mind to find myself. Today is a celebration of my emotional masturbation, of me loving me, of me getting free, of me closing my eyes but opening my mind to see, of me understanding that I am the ruler of my success and that only I can define my best, of me knowing that there is only one lane and it is me racing me and that this light is my mirror and it is me facing me and I am willing to become the snake that swallows its own head to create the symbol of infinity and I don't know about y'all atrium but tonight I embrace my insanity. Thank you. Sugar Hill, y'all, come check me out.